Broadcasting from Baltimore, Maryland, this is 5 by 3 Radio, where strength is for everyone. I'm your host, Emily Sokolinski, owner of 5 by 3 Training, a strength and conditioning gym in Baltimore, along with my co-host, Rebecca Fishburne, founder of Cornerstone Strength Maryland. Each week, Rebecca and I will discuss the ins and outs of strength training, why there is a no one size fits all approach, and why strength is so important in our daily lives. Thanks for spending some time with us today. Now, on with the show. Hi, everybody. We are back for a, uh, another uh, 5x3 radio podcast. We actually have a very a guest podcaster today with us. You will probably remember uh, Coach Craig Brooks from our interview. God, how long ago was that? I don't know. Was that this year? Was that last Time year? Time means nothing anymore. <laughs> yeah. when, did we, when did we talk to you, Craig? <laughs> I can't Ooh, remember. Maybe March, February, somewhere was it, was it? Was it this year? So, so mm-hmm. um, we asked Craig to join us today for our, uh, our podcast on cues. Um, and this is expectations and reality. Not what we were talking about last, last time. Last time we talked about expectations, reality in regards to, you know, your own training and goals you have and numbers you have and what's real and what you, you, you know, a number you want to have, you want to, you know, you want to work towards, but maybe in reality where you, you really are in your training. This is more for those of us who are either having, um, having coaching now, we're getting coached and um, cues that our coach, we might use with, uh, with our lifters. And those of you who are training on your own, let's say, and watching videos <laughs> as help, as a, you know, as a way to help you with your own training. So I wanted to start to open this up right away to Rebecca and to Craig. Um, what, let's talk about cues. What are cues? How do we use them? And what do you, you know, when you're working with your clients, you know, where are some things that you uh, discuss with them about your expectations as you're starting to coach them and work with them and cue them? I guess I'd say one of the things that I notice a lot um, working with people like, and Craig and I have sort of maybe a similar background in this, but like I, I worked with a lot of people in a group setting previously. And so there's a lot of cues that you might give in a group setting that might um, constitute reasonable general guidelines, but they're not specific to an individual lifter. Right. And so a lot of people come in with these ideas in their head of what these generalized cues are from a group setting, like, oh, your knees should never travel past your toes. Like you get people who are hung up on that kind of thing, like a cue that they've heard in a group setting, um, or even just cues like you're talking about watching videos or doing things a different style, like look up at the ceiling while you're squatting, these sorts of things. So, I mean, there's some general fitness world cues mm-hmm. that are out mm-hmm. there that sometimes I think we have to break through first um, and explain why that's not the cue that we're using or why that cue isn't um, isn't relevant to a particular lifter. And then from there, kind of move to ones that um, are maybe a little bit more specific to, to a particular lifter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, it happens like that in that world, like Rebecca just said. Um, Everybody wants to look up in the squat, um, keep their back as vertical as possible because any rounding or bending on the back, it's going to cause back injuries. Right. So that right there, a cue for that to fix that and for them to take that in accountability is tough for some people. Yes. To visualize. Yeah. And a lot of people we were talking yesterday about, um, so let's talk about videos since we brought up videos. Um, and Craig has to deal with this when he's, you know, because a lot of his clients will watch videos, right? Everybody's got, everybody's on YouTube now showing what they like to do. And, and people will watch a video and then they'll try to emulate that person, you know, mm-hmm. in that video. Well, he said to do it or she said to do it this way. So that's what I'm doing. And you're looking at them going, who are you watching? <laughs> what video did you have on? Did you have it on like, you know, warp speed and, or did you have it on, you know, what, and the mistake is that we, we, we try to watch and need people watch too many videos. So they get a mishmash of different cues and different people, different yeah. bodies lifting, and they're not watching people who look like them. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's mm-hmm. a, that's a, that's a, if you're going to watch a video of, of someone doing a lift, a squat or deadlift, try to find someone who kind of looks like you, 
because that at least will help you get an idea of <laughs> your of your setup, right? If you're well, five that, foot that's two, that's tough sometimes too, though, because sometimes people have misperceptions of what they look like. Some <laughs> like of us Rebecca. think we're taller than we are, <laughs> right? Yep. Like like but Rebecca, I, but yeah. I think for the males, you know, they get caught up in the numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, they see this guy on YouTube, and he says, "Oh, I'm pulling seven oh five. So you look at that and say, "Well." If I continue to lift like him, maybe I'll pull 705. So they start mimicking his video right. and his technique and then get in right. the gym. And it's like, what's going on? Right. Such and such said I can pull 705, but here I am struggling with 305. Well, right. why are you doing what such and such says? You're right. not such and such. Right. Right. And, we, right. We, and, and you have this uh, head button situation going on because they feel as though well, if they're lifting this amount of weight, they have to be a pro. Yeah, and, that's interesting. You yeah. know, they have to be a pro because they're lifting <laughs> yeah. seven yeah. or 800 pounds or squatting this amount of weight. So they got to be better than what you're telling me what to do uh-huh. because they're doing it. So we get that head butting situation going on and then something happens. You tweak something, you get yep. hurt. Yep. You're not understanding what's going on. Yep. And then you, you come back to reality like, wow, okay, let me start all over again. Yeah, that's like I, what you're talking about with the expectation and reality. Uh-huh. Like that guy's uh-huh. doing it, so I should be able to. Right. And yeah. right. He right. does it this way. We so. do we're doing the same thing. I'm deadlifting. He's deadlifting, but he's deadlifting 400 pounds more. So maybe I should do what he's doing instead of being coached on how to do it the correct way. Mm-hmm. Not saying that that guy wasn't doing it the wrong way, but that's not for you. Mm-hmm. I like you talking, Craig, when you talk about one of your clients who was watching a yeah. uh, a video of someone deadlifting. Yeah. And yeah. You, didn't, you didn't realize that he had been watching this, this video. Yeah, I didn't have a clue. Um, deadlifting was fine. And one day he started flapping his arms. <laughs> Set up at the bar, got down and grabbed the bar and he started flapping his arms. And I'm looking at him and I said, okay, he's warming up. Maybe he's just trying to get the kinks out. Then he added another, some more weight and he started doing it again. I said, what's going on here? Oh, well, I was watching the video and he said, I have to get my armpits tight. I said, well, that's not getting your armpits tight. You look like you're about to fly away off the platform because <laughs> you're down there and you're flapping your arms and they're hitting each other like chicken wings. I'm like, well, that's not armpit tight. So I'm like, why are you doing this? Because same scenario, so, right? So. This guy's right. deadlifting this much of weight. Right. If I do what he says, but right. that is not the expectation we're looking at. Right. Armpits tight is squeezing them together. Right. Not flapping. <laughs> yeah. That's funny because it's like there are there are cues like that that I'll use like tight armpit where it's like Correct. you've had the conversation with the person. Right. They know what you mean. They know where you're coming from. They know how to interpret or understand tight armpits versus like your guy watches it on video and comes yeah. in and he's like, I'm flapping my arms around. So my arms he's are tight. Flapping. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. OK. Well, that's that's and it's what, the same yeah. thing. Stop yeah. watching videos. Yeah. Stop watching videos. Diego had a uh, online an, a, a consultation online with a, a, a new lifter. And um, we'd met him before in person. And he was watching the videos with him. So they were watching his videos together. And Diego's watching every deadlift. And it's, it's, just a, it's just a stiff-legged deadlift, stiff-legged deadlift. You know, the bar is like flying away from him. Diego's like, what, you know, what have you been doing? Well, I've been watching these. The vi-. Diego's like, stop it right there. I'm going to say you don't watch any videos <laughs> from, <laughs> from this, from this particular person. <laughs> yep. Stop it right there. Don't, don't, I don't know. I don't know who told you told, who he told to watch the videos of, you know, or he may have just said, don't even bother watching videos, but he just said, basically stop right there because that's not what you need. And that's a big thing too. I mean, even in the gym, right. When we're coaching people, when we're cueing people, we have to be mindful to tell, you know, our clients, look, just because I gave that cue to somebody earlier and you saw me doesn't mean that applies to you. Correct. You know, like there's certain cues that like, yes, knees out. I mean, I yell knees out in the gym. Someone in the gym is going to push their knees out. And probably if you're benching or you're squatting or you're deadlifting, that's probably appropriate. Like just push your knees out. That probably yeah. is a good cue. But then there are other really, there are other cues that don't necessarily apply to you that are a little bit more, dare I say the word nuanced, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, I mean, that, Yes, they're typical, you know, uh, cues for like the, the press, elbows forward, you know, you know, get your elbows forward, what, you know, get your knuckles to the ceiling. But then there are going to be some cues that maybe apply to you because you're six foot five and you need a, diff- you need a different grip on the bar. 
and you're going to have an, a different position with the elbow or the bar is going to sit differently under your chin because of, you know, your anthropometry and your, and your forearm length. Just because that person looks like that doesn't mean you need to look like that. And I've seen people try to, you know, try to look like somebody else in the gym. Mm -hmm. and, you know, they'll say, what are you doing? Oh, well, I was watching so-and-so lift. I'm like, yeah, but that's not, that's not who you are. Like your body doesn't look like that body. You so don't try to look like, look like that person, right? Um, it's what we've given you is appropriate for you. Careful not to, you know, not to start to get other people's cues in your head. Usually it's the videos though. Usually it's the videos. It's very rare when someone in the gym, you know, may, may do that. But I had one of my friends I was working with and I was showing a deadlift with a kettlebell. And then when she got into position, she tried to kind of match her body to look like mine. I said, no, 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 no. You got long legs. I said, let me help you find the position right for you by cueing you, right? Because there's no mirror. And then when she figured it out and we practiced, it got a little bit better. I said, I said, she said, well, I was watching you. I said, yeah, but you can't watch me because I don't look like you. I'm taller right. than you. I'm taller than you, but you've got longer legs than I do. <laughs> right? That's correct. Right. And that happens a lot. You know, when, when I'm deadlifting with a client or we're deadlifting together, he's watching me the way I set up. And uh -huh. well, I see that you do X, Y, Z. Because that works for X, Y, Z. You have to find what works for you. Right. Right. You know, right. We discussed that before as, Diego might rev up into the deadlift right. to get set, but he takes time to get set in the position before he pulls. Mm -hmm. right? So it's the same situation. I do almost the same thing. I just don't rev up, right. but I take time to pause before right. I pull. Right. So the other individual, when he looks at me, he's pulling the bar hmm, three inches off the ground, and then he pushes. So I'm like, you're, you're doing a pause deadlift mid-shin, and then you, you're finishing the deadlift. I said, that's not what I'm doing. Right. I'm squeezing my chest up. Right. So the bar is coming off the ground just by me squeezing my chest up. Exactly. You're pulling exactly. the bar off the ground. And then you're trying, oh, oh, I thought you were pulling the. I just told you, don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> do what you I say. You can squeeze your chest up. You might see the similarities right. of what's going on, but you're right. not squeezing your chest up to create this tension. Right. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, D yeah, the Diego. Yeah, people do watch him, Diego, when he deadlifts, and he does. He kind of takes a couple, like one, two, or three. You know, like kind mm -hmm. of rocks, rocks a little bit. But then mm -hmm. when he gets set in position, <laughs> he pulls the he pulls the slack out of the bar. You see him just kind of squeeze in position. While other people might see that, and you see them kind of trying to rev it up like it's a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, like the, like the flapping of the arms. The flapping of the arms. And they, you know, I'm like, it's not, you don't rev it up. It's not a motorcycle. It's a bar, and that's not what pulling the slack out is. That's not what getting tight is. And sure, you can kind of, you know, squeeze the shoulders back a couple times. But then once you actually get set, the bar should mm -hmm. be in your hands. You know, the shoulders should be back. You should be, you know, everything should be set. And then, you know, the legs, uh, the legs get jump in there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little tricky. Um, you know, cueing people when they're not quite in the right position. And you say to somebody, you know, okay, I need you to uh, get into your heels. And they rock back so far into their heels, you know, that they fall backwards. You're like, okay, no, I don't want you to do that. <laughs> I just want you off your toes. Meaning I need mm -hmm. you in the middle of the foot. So being very mindful about like the kind of the cues that we do give, you know, what I say versus what you do. Yeah. Um, have yeah, you ever, exactly. have you ever experienced that Rebecca? Like, you know, kind of people. Well, I mean like there's multiple cues you can use to right. get the result that you're looking for. And so yeah. sometimes, you know, like Sadie's doing her lips in the basement now. And I forget <laughs> sometimes that like I've used a particular cue with her that might be slightly different than right. what I've used with another person. So like yesterday she was deadlifting, the bar was coming off her shins. And like, we talk a lot of times about like you grip into your pinkies, you're going to keep the bar on your shins. Uh -huh. You're going to wrap it in a horseshoe shape. Uh -huh. Like imagine you're wrapping the bar in a horseshoe shape around your shins. And like, I called out like horseshoe. <laughs> and she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, stop talking to me. I've used the wrong cue. You know, so like, right. So the, the concept can be the same, but the word, the wording can be different. You know, that totally. idea of like, um, bar on your shins or grip in your pinkies or that sort of thing. Right. Um, I forget what your question was. Oh, I think just talk, like just cueing people mm -hmm. and getting, having them do what you, what you want them to do and then them reacting and doing maybe something different or doing yeah 
And there's sometimes where it's like, you'll try a cue, you know, like Craig, you're talking about squeeze your chest through. Right. Um, and sometimes what you'll get, like maybe with a pretty flexible female lifter, instead of squeezing chest through thoracic spine, you'll get lumbar extension. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then, then you have to kind of get, well, I want your abs tight. I want your, just the, you know, this part of your shirt coming through. So, I mean, you, you try different things with different people until you get the movement that works for them. And then there's usually a cue that's associated with that. Like a lot of people that I have that have trouble with that, that T-spine extension, I'll have them do wall slides uh-huh. with like, you know, cause the wall slide, you're kind of kept honest with the elbow and the palm, sure. the back of the, the back of the hand on the um, wall, you slide it down. And when you get to that part where your elbows are kind of parallel to your or same level as your shoulders and the mm-hmm. chest kind of puffs up. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, that's what you're talking about. I like that. You know, some people can't get into that position mm-hmm. really easily and it helps them to kind of kind of build that awareness of what it's supposed to feel like mm-hmm. versus what they end up doing accidentally. Um, which a lot of times is not you know quite as much uh tight armpit chest through as they think they're getting. Yeah. Um so like you, you try different things, like push your, push your belly into your legs or, you know, whatever other cue. Sometimes if you try and cue it from the opposite side of the body. So if you want the tightness on the back, you cue it from the front side. Mm-hmm. If you want uh, the hips to go back further, you cue it from the chest, you know, um, to kind of keep the focus off the part of the body that the person is like overly focused on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also that's... cues. I think believe that cues got to be presented to the client in a way that they can understand it. Yes, um, I see that cues are be thrown out there that are too technical mm-hmm. for them to understand. Mm-hmm. It could just yeah. be the simplest cue, you know. In the press, I've I've used it tons of times in the press. Squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt, squeeze your butt. It's very simple. Right. They don't understand squeezing the butt. But I had to tell one guy, if I take my four fingers and <laughs> shove them in the crack of your butt, you remember that, Emily? Yeah. And if yes. I shove he said, oh, my God, I, I remember that. So every time he steps back, he's like, I still remember to this day what you said about the fingers in my butt. So he squeezes his butt. Just something just as plain as simple as that had, uh, I forgot his name now, he's gone. But he moved away. But it had yeah, him moved away. back in the press. And remember, it's good that you specify it was because he moved away, not because he got scared yeah, away. Yeah, well, he moved know, away he, because he, he was he didn't do that anymore. But it's just like, oh, that's all yeah. I needed. Yeah. You know, uh, another another member uh, uh, in the deadlift. Um, squeeze your chest up. Squeeze your chest up. I'm squeezing my chest up. I want to see your Nike sign. I want to see your Nike sign. Okay, all that's fine. But when I say show me your cleavage, bang. Whoa chest is up and that was liz new member liz show me your cleavage uh, and she said oh my god that's all i needed to do so now <laughs> at the bottom of the deadlift when she sets up she shows me her cleavage and bang now the back is set see and it's that's just the thing. little things you can't you can't get that from watching a video because you're not you're Correct. not gonna have it's 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 not like that i mean everyone's going to hear something different everyone's going to need something different they're they're nobody thinks the same way you know, we all think differently. We all need something real. None of, some of us are very, very, you know, kinesthetic aware. So you say, squeeze your chest up. We get that. You say, pinch your shoulder blades together. We get that. Other people have no clue what's going on in their body. They're trying yeah. to figure out this new position. You're yelling at them a bunch of different, you know, cues. I'm throwing out a ton of stuff. Trying to see what <laughs> sticks basically, right? You throw yeah. and you throw and you throw and then it sticks. You're like, good, that's your cue. And then I had to remember that, like you said, with Philippe, with um, was it Sadie? With Sadie, mm-hmm. you had to remember that because if you don't, <laughs> I've and I've said I've said stuff before, and I'm thinking, shit, that doesn't work. Like like uh, Diane um, at the gym when she's deadlifting. Man, we are having the hardest trying to help her figure out the deadlift, and I finally we nailed it. And she's like, that's my cue. Don't yeah. say that. Don't say that. Don't say that other word. Don't don't tell me this and rock off my toes. I don't understand what you're talking about. Yep. Just yeah. just say this to me, and then you know you put the blinders on and you don't listen to anybody else. Like you don't listen to anybody else's cues. You just kind of stay focused on what works for for you. And then I had to remember what works for her and try not to like pull something else out that I'm like shoot that doesn't work for her. That's right because yep. it'll just you know screw her up. Mess her up. Yeah. Just mess Real her up. Real basic. Real yep. simple. Yep. You know, elbows forward. People tend to use the other elbows and shrug up 
you know, and I'd be like, no, yeah. not those elbows. I want these elbows. Mm -hmm. But then you have to put them in position so they can understand that, right. oh, these elbows, not my shoulder elbows. Correct. Not your shoulder elbows. <laughs> these elbows. You know? yeah. Like, oh, OK, well, I got it. Now. I mean, like, I think we get that a lot because I think we get a lot of people who spend a good portion of their day at a desk or a keyboard or stressed out. And so yeah. this like, you know, shrug mm -hmm. up into your ears happens yes. all the time and they yes. don't even realize they're doing it. So when you want, you know, chest up, elbows forward for your press, like you get shoulders mm -hmm. up and chest caved. <laughs> the mm -hmm. biggest, the, the biggest thing, maybe we don't see this too much anymore because they've kind of fixed it. But you remember seeing a lot of people jacking their elbows up in the squat? In the squat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we said elbows up. I had a woman who came about a month ago and she's, she's coming back to see me and she's been watching a ton of videos. Okay. That's cool. She's trying to, she's trying to learn on her own. I get that. But then the elbows are totally jacked up mm -hmm. and I'm pulling them down. Like she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, your elbows, they don't, they don't need to be that high. Well, I was told, I was watching the video and the video said elbows. I said, that's not elbows up. Right. <laughs> Just like right. this is, we don't want this. We don't want elbows right. under and through. We don't want elbows up here because the bar is just going to roll around on your yeah. back. I did notice the bar was rolling around a lot. I was like, yeah, because your elbows are, they're, they're not up. You're not even in you're not even in position. Yeah, but, there's like but, degrees to it, you know. So like was, somebody who doesn't have that issue but thinks like, oh, I need elbows up, and then corrects well, it because up. Because they were they were told more. they were told yeah. the video the video they were watching by somebody who didn't see what their squat looked like. <laughs> said you need you need to have your elbows up because if not the and it's like no actually this is just oh really that's all I said elbows up is just this position <laughs> that's all it is see your elbows are up <laughs> but it's it's hard you have to kind of break the habits that people have developed from watching those videos and not really understanding what exactly so, they're watching right so I think too though is like it's not only like breaking the habits that people develop lifting on their own or watching videos or something but over the course of a person's lifting uh -huh. they might need the opposite cue at, yes. a, at a different point like I remember one day when I was you know early on when Jan was getting coached on um uh she's getting coached on her deadlift and uh -huh. she had been previously been coached like hips lower uh -huh. she had corrected that, uh -huh. then overcorrected that. Uh -huh. And then the uh -huh. cue was the opposite. Then uh -huh. the cue was your hips are too high. Uh -huh. Right. Uh -huh. So, and that's uh -huh. the sort of thing that happens all the time. A all the time. Form, they'll overcorrect. And then the, the, you know, like it works like the pendulum. And right. so like they overcorrect, the cue becomes the opposite, but it's just, she, she cracked me up because she just got so frustrated. And I did not expect <laughs> that level of frustration and language. From someone <laughs> that at that point, I didn't know very well. And I was like, oh, the little lady, is saying these things <laughs> and I was like oh that's not Jan at all now I know yeah now yeah. Like, yeah okay that's cool <laughs> now I know what to expect but yeah I mean that sort of overcorrecting. so when you're talking about somebody in their toes or in their heels or whatever but really what you're looking for is midfoot uh -huh. you know sometimes sometimes the cue ends up sounding like the opposite uh -huh. of the cue you've been given right. previously right 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 mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I mentioned this earlier about people, if you're going to watch videos, and it's fine to watch videos, but, you know, as Diego says, he encourages people to watch videos of people who look like them. So if you're six foot five, try to find a, a six foot five lifter so that you can see the squat position, you can see the, the press. It's nice to have Ryan coaching on Mondays, right, at the gym, because we've got a lot of tall people. Um, and he's tall. So if someone's struggling, he can walk over, talk to them, kind of give an idea of like, well, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. This is how I grip the bar. This is how, I, how wide my, my legs are in the, in the, in the squats, in the squat stance or deadlift. And that might really work for them. They're like, oh, wow, that feels so much better mm -hmm. because, you know, they have longer limbs. <laughs> they have a mm -hmm. longer way to go in the press, a longer way to go in the squat. What works for me may not work for them, even just even the setup. So trying to find someone, and I remember when I was thinking of, when I was working on my squat, I wanted to find somebody who kind of had my similar shape. And I settled on um, Austin Baraki's wife mm -hmm. and kind of watched her. And I was like, that's, that's how I need it. That's how Diego's telling me to squat. So I really watched her and it, it worked. It helped a lot to watch her. Watching Nikki squat isn't going to help me. Right. Nikki's right. six foot one, six foot two. Right. You know, deadlift also, but watching 
um, I can't remember her name, but watching all Rain, squats, right? I, yeah, watching her squat, I was like, oh, that I like, I get that. That looks how like that looks like me. So mm-hmm. that that helped quite a bit to kind of have her visually in my head. Trying not to, I mean, I'm not going to squat exactly like her. She's a beast, but but seeing the knees going a little bit more forward, you know, my not the knees not so out out so much. I mean, just mm-hmm. it, it helped it helped a lot. So find someone who has similar proportions to you. Mm-hmm. Right. That helps quite a bit because then it's like, okay, this is something that works for them. This may work for me. But then underneath all that, you still have to you know, have to find what cue is going to help you remain in position or, you know, get that next rep. Um, and it's, and oftentimes it may not be the person next to you. That person next to you is, is not you, even though, you know, we're yelling knees out and elbows forward <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> there are all those little fine, finer cues that occur that, yeah. you know. And it's so overwhelming when they first started out. Absolutely. They just fall to pieces. Mm-hmm. And you just pull them to the side and simple cue is like, well, you know, you squat to the toilet, you got a regular size toilet. And they'd be like, yeah. I said, well, you know, you squat to the toilet. Right. Yeah. I said, but you don't let your knees go forward before you squat into the toilet. Right. Uh, no. I said, but you set your hips back first. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> I want you to squat to the toilet with the bar on your back now. Yeah. Oh. See, so the one okay. I use like that. You know, oh, I got it. Yeah. And it. It's like magic. Yeah. Real simple. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, and then they come back, you know, um, I was practicing my squat sitting to the toilet the other day. <laughs> yeah. I'm using the bathroom. So I'm sure you are. You don't but realize. Now you're doing it the right way. How much of your daily life you do all mm-hmm. these different movements, right? When I, yeah. Same thing with, with the squat. I do that. I'll have people when I'm trying to get them to understand about leaning over and sitting back. I'll say, you don't sit down like this. And I'll sit down real tall, like, you know, with, and they look and they look at me. I said, if you sat down like that, people would look at you like, okay, that person's kind of <laughs> weird. Why is she, why is she sitting down with like her back completely straight and like looking like she's about to fall over onto the, you know, onto her face. I said, you might do that if you're wearing a really tight dress <laughs> that you have to like, you know, look like a princess sitting down, but that's not how we actually squat. And they're like, no, I don't move like that. Like exactly. And that seems to click. It's like, oh, yeah. you're right. The I one don't. I do like that is like the outhouse, right? Like when we go mm-hmm. camping and there's the pre yeah. on the AT, mm-hmm. like you're leaning your butt way back. Because <laughs> yeah. you're exactly. trying to stay as far away from that as you possibly can while exactly. still in the hole. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. My and it's, it's yeah. very simple, right? It's very simple. And then when they get that visualization in their mind, and then when they squat high, I'd be like, well, if you're squatting high here, you're squatting high on the toilet at home. <laughs> so the bathroom is going to be kind of messy. You need to get a little lower. And they're like, you're right. I'm you're like, right. I know, you know, so get a little lower. Mm-hmm. It's funny, Craig, because I was going to say, like, what are the, what are the um, most unusual cues either of you have ever used? You've already tossed two out. Well, obviously, you tossed two out. Because when I get serious with them, they don't understand it. So when I throw something out there like that, then like, it clicks. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I, just, I this is not so much for, uh, this is for kettlebell swings. I had a client who I, I, when I was teaching the kettlebell swing years ago, I'd say, you know, when you come through and squeeze your butt, you got to imagine you're catching a quarter right between the butt mm-hmm. cheeks mm-hmm. Like, and you're going to hold that quarter. Mm-hmm. So, so Candace, when she would swing, she would, you'd hear a count, she'd go 25, 50, 75, <laughs> a dollar. The She's catching the quarters, catching the quarters. I'd be like, you got to catch the quarter. If, you're not, if, the quarter, if your butt's not tight, that quarter's going to fall right out. I said, so catch the quarter. That, that clicked. I collect with people. So that's a cue I've given. Catch the quarter. It's it's, it's, it's uh, funny. Yeah. It's amazing how words can change things. <laughs> yeah. I um my girlfriend who I'm working with right now, she's um in town for a couple months. She's on Broadway. And I went to high school with her. I was telling Craig yesterday about Bahia. And we were working on the bench. I was helping her teaching her on the bench. And she started to figure out what her back was doing on the bench. And this is a dancer. This is someone who's been dancing her whole life. Mm-hmm. She ballet, modern. She danced with Alvin Alley. She danced with the Frankfurt Ballet. And she's still figuring out how her body moves and what to engage. So she got off the bench and she said to me, oh, you know what? It's just like when I hold my arms in port bra in first position and I have to open up to second. That's what you're t- – I said, that's exactly it. I said, you don't have the dancers rounding their backs – shoulders forward, you tell them chest up and, you know, squeeze everything. She goes, 
that makes a lot of sense that I can, now I see what I have to do on the bench in order to stay in position. I said, hmm. it's that. So I, so it's like, how do I, how do I take the strength word, strength words, you know, all uh-huh. the words I'm using here and apply Translated it to the dance. And that's with, with, um, RDLs, with RDLs, um, teaching my young dancers. I said, you know, it's like doing a port de bras except your knees are a little bit soft. And I was telling, I was showing that to, to Bahia and she, she, it clicked with her. She's like, that looks exactly, looks exactly like a port de bras, except my knees, my legs are going to go, are going to stay straight, are going to bend a little bit, going to soften a little bit. But that same idea of a, of a flat back, the hips moving back. I mean, it's, it's movement. It's just words are a little different and the, the position is slightly, you know, slightly different. That kind of brings up an interesting um thing that I I notice a lot with people is they may know pretty well how to create the position that you're asking them to Mm -hmm. when they're oriented one way towards gravity. So port de bras makes sense to your dancers when they're standing on their feet, you get them on the bench on their back and it's like, like it's a different movement or it's a different thing you're asking me to do, but it's Mm -hmm. really the same thing. Mm -hmm. You're just like back down to gravity instead of bottoms of feet. (laughs) Well, as as Diego said to said to me for years, he said, you know, you teaching this is very similar to you teaching ballet and dance. You're just, you have an implement in your hand now that Mm -hmm. you're now using. So she has a bar in her hand and every time she's pushing the bar away, she's shrugging her, she's pushing her arms forward, you know, like a lot of people do. And I say to them, don't make your arms long, make your arms short, like keep that back, keep that chest up. Once she started to figure out what I was asking her to do, and I'm shoving my hands under her shoulder blades and telling her to push down to my hands, she said, oh, yeah, it's like holding my arms in port de bras. Yes. Now just do that while you're holding on to this piece of, you know, this, this piece of equipment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all it takes. Simple yeah. cues. And they understand it and they apply it and it works. Um, another. Uh, Common cue is bracing. Mm-hmm. You tell everybody to brace, and they say they understand, but then they don't brace, right? Nope. Um, nope. My simple cue is the punch in the gut. Mm-hmm. You know, real simple. So I'm punching mm-hmm. you in the stomach. What are you going to do right now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah. I said, well, hold it. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. I use that one a lot too. Diego or likes the, the one push. Diego, the push, yeah. yeah, I was going to say the push on the wall. Yeah, Diego likes push that one. Push your car up a hill. Jay had, Jay had one of his clients literally push one of the racks. That one mm-hmm. of our, our, our one of our racks that does move. He well, had her prowler. push that. He'd yeah, he'd stick someone behind a heavy prowler for yep. a little bit and be like, mm-hmm. did, you, "Did you just yep. notice what happened there with yep. your?" Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I like the sucker punch. I do that. Yeah, <laughs> I said, if I go to sucker punch you, what are you going to do? You're going to you're going to see that that fist coming. You're going to automatically brace. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yep. I get it. Um, it doesn't come, it doesn't come naturally. It doesn't, it takes, it takes time to, to, to process all that. That's why, you know, we talk about cues, cues have to be short. They have to be, you know, they have to, because you can only hear so much. Um, so I have to be very mindful about what cues I'm using. And then when I give the cue, sometimes I'm not talking to somebody when they're lifting and Mm -hmm. they'll say to me, is everything okay? I said, if I don't say anything, everything's fine. I don't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk. And, right. just, and open my mouth just to open my mouth and say something. <laughs> right. I mean, that's if I, there's nothing to say, I'm not going to say anything. And, and vice versa, if there's somebody I know who doesn't necessarily can't concentrate when you're talking, I wait until they're done and then maybe give them cues. Like, and that might work for that person. Right. Correct. Yeah, like, so did you ever get a new person like <laughs> where it's like you're trying to give the cue, you've had the conversation ahead of time, you're trying to give the cue and they take that as an invitation for conversation in the middle of a set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to the head turns. Yeah. 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 Frankie, I get Frankie, that. Frankie does that. Was she doing that with you, Craig? <laughs> yeah. One of our clients, her head will yes. turn. I'm like, don't look at me. Right. Just listen to my voice. Stop yeah. talking. That's like, that's the fastest, easiest thing for me to deal with. Don't talk while you're lifting. <laughs> Craig, Craig, was doing, Craig was doing that and with then you, uh, Bill. And then I got, then you got Liz. Um, <laughs> you give it a whole boatload of cues and she's talking to him as she, okay, I'm setting up under the bar. Yep. I'm squeezing my back tight. I'm squeezing my chest up. I'm stepping out the rack. I'm looking at my feet as I step. Liz, be quiet. <laughs> you need that energy. Be quiet. She's doing that. She's <laughs> Sold yeah. down, pressed up, <laughs> fighting on the floor, back tight, arms locked. I was like this. I was like, she better not be talking when that bar comes out of that rack. <laughs> and I like it when uh, uh, Craig has a client who comes once a month, and uh, he's an older uh, older guy. And I was, I was laughing, cracking up, listening to Craig coach. Uh, he was coaching Bill the other day. I was cracking yeah. up because you're like, stop talking. Why are you having a conversation? Just squat. 
And he's like, yeah. I don't know. It feels heavy. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. I don't like this. I should be higher than this. I shouldn't do that. Stop talking. Just squat. <laughs> That's all, Bill. <laughs> You're fine. You know. So it, yeah, I mean, I, we, this comes this comes back to a, a big theme with our with our, our podcast, right? Um, it always it all depends. It all depends <laughs> on the person. It all depends on you. What you yeah. see on video. Just because that person is deadlifting, like you said, 600 pounds, doesn't mean you necessarily need to follow that program <laughs> or lift the way that that person's lifting. That's not how you're going to get to 600, mm-hmm. right? Programs too. Right? People want to, they want to, they want to do what that person's doing, but that yeah. person is that person, and they may be just trying to, you know, give you some information about what they do with their training, but not necessarily say, hey, if you train like me, you're going to. Correct. It's and they're pro- probably not going to. Well, I don't know. They're, I don't know. Are they? Would they? If you if you hired them as a coach, would they try to train? What do you think, Craig? Would they try to train you the way that they train? I mean, I guess some coaches do that. They they put people. Some on. coaches do, yeah. Right. I mean, you know, they're familiar with their own self and their training, so they'll right. implement it with the uh, client right. and try to train them the same way. Yeah. Um, but then that comes to the knowledge of the age, right? Exactly. You know, weight, size, right? What they right. can do and what they can't do. Right. Um, Because all programs don't fit all people. Right. Right. And that's where it goes wrong. You know, buy my program for $29.99 and you'll be benching 400 pounds. And people do that. Right. And then it doesn't happen. And it's an injury. You know, marketing is the key. You get injured. And so. Well, because they're not, they're not, you know, they're not five, uh, five, 11, 250 pounds. Let's say. <laughs> Correct. You know? Correct. Right. <laughs> so how's that, how's that program going to apply to them? And they have, they're going to have to eat the same way this person eats and they're going to have to train the same way, but they're not that person. Correct. So, and that's the bottom so, line. Yeah. So I think that that's, there's, there's that too. In addition to just kind of like watching the videos is then trying to really buy into that person's program and, and, and just that may not be the right most likely it's not yeah. the, that and, nice and, the, and won't put the work in. I mean, you remember we had a client that came through the door and they wanted to look like Diego. Right. Right. Man. I was, I was coaching them. And he was like, man, right. look at right. him. Mm-hmm. I want to look like him. Mm-hmm. And that was his goal. Right. But, but he just didn't want to do the work. Couldn't do it. Right. That. And he could have did the same program, which he would have been doing the same program, but he didn't have the, work capacity to say, no. I really want to look like them, but I don't want to work like them. No, no. And a lot of that work was the, the eating, right? A lot oh, of that of comes, right. it comes down to us oftentimes the eating, like he wasn't going to eat. I mean, Diego has had to eat a lot over the past 10 plus years that he, right. been, you know, and he still has to eat enough to maintain the, what he does, right. what he does have, but he, he was willing to do that. You but know. that's what individuals don't see. Mm-hmm. They don't see the outside of the gym. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't see the sleeping. They don't see the nutrition, mm-hmm. the recovery. They just see him. Wow, he's lifting a lot of weight. When can I lift like that? Mm-hmm. You know, Mike, uh, the tall member, Mike, mm-hmm. see me deadlifting the other day. He's like, wow, how much is that? I was like, it's such and such, such, such. Right. Well, when, I, when do you think I'm going to be able to do that? I said, Mike, I don't know. Don't I don't know. know your habits. That's right. <laughs> you know? That's right. Right. That's a great I don't know answer. your habits. Yeah. You're not me and I'm not you. That's right. Yeah. You know, we might weigh the same, mm-hmm. but we're not the same. Mm-hmm. So. Right. Right. And that's the thing. It's like, it's building, building habits, you know, the, your own training habits, which how, you know, what you do outside the gym and then what you do inside the gym and your own program for you. And also just your own genetic potential, which, you know, right. what you, what you're capable of doing. Um, and it might take years and, you know, if you're willing to put the work in, but it goes back to, same thing with the what's watching, watching the videos. Just because you see somebody you want to look like mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean you're going to look like that person because that's not how your body functions. And you don't have mm-hmm. the time to train seven days a week, two <laughs> hours plus a day, like mm-hmm. that, that person might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Any other uh, thoughts about cues, cueing? I think we kind of covered a. a a bunch of it. It's a good one. I don't think we've talked about like, you know, with this, this before. So this was a good, this was a topic that Diego thought might be of good interest because I think it goes along, it goes along with that expectations versus reality, you know, of your own training too. Yeah. You know, kind of of focus on yourself, focus on your, your goals, focus on what you need to do, focus on 
what your coach, if you have a coach, has uh, the feedback that he or she is giving, giving, giving to you, the program you're on, and careful with you know what with who who and what you're watching right. as you're as you're as you're you know getting into your own training. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. There's no no one size fits all. Not at all. Not at all. Not with cues, not, not with training, not no. with any of that stuff. No. When I send, I usually try to send videos. If I'm sending videos to, let's say, any of my like online clients, I'm trying to find videos of people who are uh, doing a lift in a in a good in the right way. Like I like notice how the elbows are forward. Notice how the head is gazed. But it's not not so much look like that person. It's just right. notice the setup. Notice. Remember, I'm saying eye gaze up. See, I want the eye gaze up. See how the elbows are forward. That's what I'm looking for from you. The person could be tall, short, but generally it's just, you know, look at where the eye gaze is, look where the elbows are, look, something along those lines, something very, very simple. Not mm-hmm. like make yourself look like that person completely. Mm-hmm. You know, just, you know, a, a visual to a, a written or, you know, verbal cue that now those, that person has a visual to also. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, I see that. Let me try that. Oh, wow, that works. Okay, mm-hmm. check. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it takes, yeah, like you're saying, a lot of different me- methods or modes for a person to understand the game. Right. You know, right. like visual, tactile, auditory, mm-hmm. right. all of those things. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm very picky about the videos I send people. Like, I will go to good sources <laughs> for, you know, for videos. Right. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I kind of am picky. Like mm-hmm. I will go through YouTube channels and I'm typing in, like, I want to see this. At the, and I'm like, well, that's a good one. That's very simple. It's short. Good. And then I'm like that mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Forget that one. I'm not going to send that one. It's going to confuse the crap out of somebody because that's, yeah, I've had that's people important. online too, where it's like, you know, an accessory lift. I want them to do it. I can't find any video that I like because mm-hmm. sometimes some of the accessory lifts are ones more associated with, you know, physique or bodybuilding yes. or something yes. like that. And I'm just yeah. like, this video is such crap. Yeah. I'm just going to like type a verbal description of what <laughs> right. I want you to do. Or what I'll do is I'll, I'll get one of my members and I'll say, can you, can you do, do a couple squats for me or do some presses yeah. and film yeah. them? And actually, mm-hmm. uh, Ryan did that with one of his new clients. He sent a, a, a video of Faisal pressing mm-hmm. and said, watch Faisal press. Because, I mean, and that's good. It's like, this is somebody who's coached by us. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see the, the, the five by three coaching, right? The five by, few, the five by three cues. Because there is, there is, you know, you hear, even though Craig might say <laughs> something and I might say something different, they're all the same cues, just maybe being said in a different manner for that person. You find you find what what will click yeah. that individual that you're so, working with. I'll tell you something about that with cues, like because it's helpful, like you're saying, to be getting cues from coaches that have the same model in mind, mm-hmm. right? The cues are uh, they make more sense that way. But like there was, I mean, I just think this was interesting because there was that time where I had that um, it was like uh, an intercostal like, you know, one of the little muscles between right. my ribs was all screwed up. And so I'd been getting some coaching and some cues for my bench press, uh-huh. you know, in terms of where my bar was tapping uh-huh. too high, too low, whatever. And then, you know, I get this injury and now the cues are completely the opposite. Sure. And it was so, like sure. one of those situations like with Jan where overcorrect um, and then the yep. cue changes in my yep. case, there was an injury. I wasn't able to get the same um, arc. Uh-huh. And so the bar path was different. Like uh-huh. my, my touch point changed enough so that I was like, why are these cues all of a sudden so different? Right. And like, <laughs> it, you know, Christian and I kind of noodled through that for, for a little minute or whatever. And then it was like, but it was like, yeah, I think it was a little frustrating for a second. It's exactly the opposite of what people were telling me last week. <laughs> but in that case, I knew everybody still yeah. had the same model in mind. It yeah. wasn't like I was getting a completely different cue yes. from somebody who was basing it on a total totally random video that they yes. had watched. It was, um, you know, there was a real reason for that, which we right. could identify pretty quickly then. Right. Yeah, so. no, yeah, it's true. Mm-hmm. Things, things will change, you know, I mean, based on what, you know, whatever condition you're in, you might have to have, you might resort to having to, to train a little slightly differently. So the cues might be a little different then. Because you have and sometimes when you're injured and you're pretending you're not. It's there is that, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> to, to pretend that there's really nothing that different that's right. <laughs> until you hear the cues. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and to bring up a point about the cues, 
<clears throat> one last, let me touch on this one. Sure. A couple of years ago when Jennifer and Jessica did their powerlifting meet, we were all back in the uh, squatting area because they were ready to squat. Right. Um, so, you know, it was other women and men back there squatting. So we squat the model. We've always squat the model. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the other individuals over there and they're changing their squats up. And I'm, you know, I'll go to the bathroom, I'll come back. I'm like, well, that doesn't look right. I walk up to them and I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're not squatting low bar. What's going on? Oh, well, you know, uh, we're just watching everybody else. I said, no, get back to what you know, right? And it's, and, and it's funny because when they started squatting the model, the low bar style, everybody walked up to them and said, oh, you must be those ripper toe people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because they know how we squat. Right. You know? Right. Right. And they both yeah. did well. Jen squatted like 260 and Jessica hit 308. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, we're the Roberto people, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and they was like, oh, you're going to hurt your back or you're bending over too much. You're going to fall forward. I'm like, oh. yeah, well. Why do you think they were watching other people and weren't into change? How because they, they got nervous. Uh, you know, yeah. it's the nervous and, yeah. oh, my God, I'm, I'm around these people and they're, they're not looking like us. Yeah. So it's the whole thing of like videos. I'm watching people. Yeah. And now they're trying to change it up day of like, no, that's not how we do this. You yeah. stay comfortable. Well, we got us here. Not, oh, well, she looks like she's doing it this way. And no, no. So no. same thing. Don't watch people. Don't no, watch videos. Never, never, never. I don't, I don't watch anybody when I'm, when I, the couple of meets that I've ever done definitely have never watched anybody warming up. I stick with, I just kind of like put the blinders on, focus on what I yeah. need to do. And I yeah. definitely don't watch anybody before I do the lift. I'm looking yep. at the ground. I'm looking at the ceiling. I'm not watching them because if they get it or if they miss, I don't want to know. I don't care. Yeah. When, I, we, was, when, we, when we were competing, Diego said, go in the back. Go live. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't sit out here and watch them. Don't, don't watch people. Don't watch people. I never, I don't watch anybody. I kind of just stare at the ground and then they complete their lift. They're done. I look up and now I'm ready to go because if I see anything, it's, this is about me. I need to focus on what I, what I look like and what I yep. do because everyone sets up differently watching the Stronger Together meet this past year. Everybody who got on that platform had a different setup for the squat, had a different position for the squat, mm -hmm. press too. Some people had the bar real high. Some people started the bar real low. Everybody yep. has their own setup. You don't, you don't want to mess with that, especially with another lifter. Like you're not, I'm not, never, would never try to come in and change somebody else's lifting with, when I know that they are being coached by somebody else. You don't do that. You don't do that. And you don't change as a, as a lifter yourself, especially like the day of a meet. Yeah. yeah that's that's hard that's hard to handle yeah all right yeah, but yeah. i'm looking at the uh the time i know that rebecca's yeah. got to go so i think we can uh we'll wrap this up for uh for today thank you very much craig hey, hey and i enjoyed it. us this is good nice to it. talk to you guys i know i think yeah. we need to, we need do, to do this, this more often yes yeah. i think so uh -huh. i think rebecca and i enjoy talking to each other but it's good to have another uh Another yeah. voice, another voice fun. in the uh, in the conversation because it does uh, sure. it, yeah. it makes us think about other things too that we don't normally uh, you know think about. So thank you, appreciate you joining us today. Mm -hmm. um, everybody, we will be back in a couple weeks for a uh, another five by three uh, radio podcast. Um, thinking the topic might be on uh, weightlifting for kids. That was a, a topic. Oh, yeah, that somebody, you had mentioned that. Yeah, somebody, somebody asked a couple of my members if they mm -hmm. had topics, and one of them said, you know, why don't you talk about kids and how kids can, can do this too? I said, that's a good one because Very good we've, one. Talked, we've talked about Rebecca's daughters. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I definitely know that uh, I've had children as young as eight mm -hmm. in the gym mm -hmm. lo mm -hmm. loving, what, loving what they're doing and uh, mm -hmm. it being completely appropriate and how and when to, uh, to get kids involved in something like this. So... I think that'll be our next podcast that we'll let us discuss. Maybe we'll join, have Craig you know, oh, yeah. join us again for that because that'd be good, uh, yeah. a good one for us to talk to you about since you've had a lot of experience with uh, you know, working with that'd be good. young people. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. We have, uh, right. have a great week. And uh, thank you, you for Thank you, Craig. All right. Hey, see you later. You Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks for listening to 5 by 3 Radio with Emily and Rebecca. If you like our show and want to know more about 5 by 3 Training, Please visit us at www.5, that's F-I-V-E, the letter X, the number three, dot com. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram. To learn more about Rebecca, please visit her website, cornerstonestrengthmaryland.com. Thanks for listening and have a great week.